so now I want to look at finding the slope of a line tangent to a given function with a different function. We did the uh, squaring function, x squared, in another video. Let's look at the square root function now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to define my point of tangency. So let's take an arbitrary point of tangency with an x value of c. Well, if the x value of c and this is my, if the x value is c and that's my point of tangency, then the y value is just going to be the square root of c because any y value in this function is just the square root of the x value. So this is my point of tangency. I'll label it POT. That's the point of tangency, all right? Then I'll have another arbitrary point. I'll call that x value just x so that this point, this green point, has x for its x coordinate and the square root of x for its y coordinate. So, what I want to do is, well, first I'll look at uh, the slope of the secant line connecting the blue and the green point, and then I'll take the limit as the green point gets closer and closer and closer to the blue point. Here's what that looks like. So, the slope of the tangent line is equal to, well, I want the green point to get arbitrarily close to the blue one, so I'm taking the limit as this value here, this x value, x, gets closer and closer to this x value over here, c. So I'm taking the limit as x approaches c, and then now I'm just going to calculate the slope. So I'm going to take this y value, y2, square root of x, minus this y, va y value, y1, square root of c, divided by this x value, x2, x, minus this x value, x1, which is C. All right, upon initially plugging this in, upon initially plugging C in, I get the square root of C minus the square root of C, which is 0, divided by C minus C, which is also 0. So I get 0 over 0, the indeterminate form. Whenever you get that, you know you have to do something else to calculate the limit. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rationalize this thing. I'm going to rationalize the numerator. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches C of the square root of x minus the square root of c divided by x minus c. And I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this thing by the conjugate of the numerator. The conjugate of the numerator is the square root of x plus the square root of c. Basically, the same two terms um, with a difference with the opposite sign in the middle. So I'm go also going to do the same thing to the bottom because you can't do something to the top of a fraction without doing it to the bottom of a fraction if you expect to keep the same quantity or the same uh, an equivalent fraction. So this becomes um, equals the limit as x approaches c and on top I'm going to get the square root of x squared when I'm foiling this right this times this um, plus the square root of x times the square root of c, that's this times this, minus the square root of x times the square root of c, which is this times this, and then minus the square root of c squared, which is this times this. These middle terms just cancel each other out. On the bottom, I'm not going to multiply it out, and you'll see why in a second. I'm just going to leave it as x minus c times the square root of x plus the square root of c. I'm just going to leave it in the factored form like that. And what happens here is on top, I still have this, the limit as x approaches c. But on top now, the square root of x squared is just x, and that's minus the square root of c squared is just c. So that's why I didn't cancel, I mean, I didn't multiply out the bottom because I have a factor of x minus c now that'll cancel with that factor of x minus c in the numerator, square root of c. So now I have these two canceling out, and this becomes the limit as x approaches c of 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of c. And when I plug in the value of c for x, because this is the limit as x approaches c, I get 1 over the square root of c plus the square root of c, 
which is equal to 1 over 2 square roots of c. So for this particular function, the square root function, the slope of a line tangent to the function at any point, c comma square root of c, is just going to be 1 divided by 2 square roots of whatever that x value is. So this is the slope of the tangent line to the square root function.